Guys, this is Smasher32. I'm gonna give you guys a tutorial on Banjo Kazooie 100%. Uh, Banjo Kazooie 100% involves collecting 100 jiggies, 900 notes, and all 24 honeycomb pieces. It does not consider mumbo tokens and the stop and swap items as 100%. Um, I'll go into the details of each level as I get to them. Obviously, we need a file. I'm gonna delete this one for now. Even though, you know, it looks like I put a lot of time into it, it's not a big deal. I can always do it later. The first thing where we're going to start is we want to, before we do anything else, go to a file that's already seen all that stuff and go back to this. So that'll let us skip cutscenes. So what I'm going to do is hit start, or hit A, excuse me, and hold start right here. And that'll let us easily skip that cutscene. So starting out, you don't have any of your moves. All you can do is just jump a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump and talk to bottles. If you don't hit this jump, it's not the big deal. And right now what we're going to do is cancel text using L, R, and B. Obviously I didn't hit the right buttons. You can't skip text here. There's some text you can't actually cancel, and this is one of the few exceptions to the rule. Um, obviously you want to hit B here, make sure you have all the moves. Cancel text, how I do it, there's two ways you can cancel text. I hold it like this, but... I've also in the past held the controller like this to cancel the text. This is easier, but you might want different access to control stick, so you might hold it like this. I'll go a little bit more of the situational stuff later. So anyway, uh, just to go over movement a little bit, walking is considered decent speed, rolling is considered faster, but if you, at the end of the roll, don't do anything, you will already stop. So we want to jump. But you'll notice that after a jump, Banjo does a little like sidestepping and kind of loses some speed. But if you flutter, you'll, you won't lose any speed. So anyway, ideally what you want to do is roll, flutter, roll, flutter. I should probably explain that. Right here is a first, I guess, big tech. So what we want to do instead of going all the way around, high jump. You might not hit this first time. We consider this RNG. We don't know exactly how it works or why. Um, I'll get it eventually, don't worry. It usually takes two or three tries. And then kill this Kaliwobble for the first honeycomb out of six in Spiral Mountain. You don't need to cancel this text, it's pretty not important. Uh, move your way over here. We're just gonna go in a kind of a giant circle for now. And now we're gonna go destroy these boulders just with Beak Barge. Go as close up to it as possible. And then you don't even have to move very far. If you move up a little bit more, I could hit that, destroy that. Walk, 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 destroy, walk, 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 destroy, and grab that. It might actually spawn low to the ground, so you have to be careful to grab it. You, there's a, about a fraction of a second when it first spawns that you can't actually grab it because it's still loading. So just take your time with all the tokens if they spawn really low to the ground. We're going to go over here. Oop. And we're going to grab this. One thing about swimming is as soon as you enter swimming or flight, you hold R. You literally should be taping your finger down, not literally, to the controller because that will allow you to turn sharper. Um, you can also use R as far as camera. It's not too important. I suggest just get familiar with how you want to work the camera. Uh, for this, instead of high jumping, you want to be on the kind of the right side of the stump, jump, and rat -a tat rap. It's actually easier if you roll into it. So just roll, jump, rat -a tat rap, kind of late into your jump, get that honeycomb. Walk, walk, walk. Uh, coming up is another interesting part. It's important that you don't roll right around here, because if you do, Bottles is just going to come up. So, just got to be careful with that. High jump up here, and if you... Oh, actually, I want to show something off. If you're right here and you jump, you'll automatic, you'll just go straight to the top of the tree. Jump, flutter, go, go, go. Right here at the corner, jump and rat a tat rap. You might miss the jump. Happens. Don't worry about it. Uh, jump flutter, jump flutter, just some some basic movement, nothing crazy. Alright, and now we have all six honeycombs. And from here, we're just going to go straight to bottles. Oops, don't do that. You can either rat a tat rat or flutter there. And go to the corner and high jump, you'll save some seconds. Flutter, roll, flutter, roll, flutter, roll. And this is probably the equivalent of the, uh, the Lakitu skip early game in Mario 64. What we're going to do is go up to the edge, and 
we're gonna like hold the control stick towards the wall, and as soon as we finish half, like as soon as we start high jumping, we're gonna let go. Ideally, what you want to do is land on the corner so that it does not cue the bottle's text. And then right from there, we just jump over him. And that saves about three seconds. So that does actually take some practice, but you'll get it. So because we were able to go over to another file from before, all we have to do is just press start here. If you start on file two or file three, you'll never have to worry about going back and forth between files. So just go left, jump and grab the jiggy. Once again, ca cancel text. I like to do this just to, you know, pick around, whatever. Um, just hold back. You don't even have to worry about the camera right now. Um, everything from here is predictable. And while I activate Mumbo's, I feel like I should mention something. Once you're starting out, the camera is gonna be very weird sometimes. It can erratically move in ways you don't really know about. Um, the best thing I can tell you is, as far as camera, just experiment with it. Experiment with uh, zooming out. Uh, you can't do that here apparently, but experiment with zooming out, zooming in, um, just different positions of the camera. Don't all always have it behind you, although in my opinion that's a great position for it. Anyway, first level, Mumbo's Mountain. So what we're going to do right here is go right to the Jinjo. We're not going to high jump to it, we're just going to jump and rat -tat rap That'll be enough. I like to zoom out and rotate the camera once. And this is kind of the first interesting thing. So if you're on a slope for too long, it's about a second. I it thinks like, actually about a second, yeah. If you're on this for too long, you just slide. And yeah, Bottles even tells you, don't do that. But we're gonna do a silly little bypass where it's just jump, jump, jump. If we were to do three jumps instead of two, then yeah, I would have to fall, obviously. But all you have to, uh, all you have to do is just do three really quick jumps, and if you're not confident, then just try and roll. You know, I take that back. Just try and do three jumps really quickly. And what might help a little bit is while you're still on this little slope, roll then jump, because that'll give you a little speed boost. See, that's what happens if you are on there for too long. So same movement as before. Try and space out your rolls when you're moving. Just to give you an example of what my what I consider not good movement. Like, you're not taking advantage of the roll speed. You want to kill this guy, actually, because he causes some lag while you're destroying the huts. That reduces it a little bit. So, talk to bottles, cancel text. And from here, you're going to do, instead of trying to jump and then jump stop again, we're going to do it all in one. So jump, bam. Only one jump, grab the note while you're in the air. Grab this note, leave the other four for later. And literally the same thing here, just jump once. If you need to re-jump it or something happens, it's not a big deal. So we're going to go right to Ticker's Tower. This is probably one of the harder tricks to learn for newbies, but it's pretty much the same logic as before. You want to spend as little time on the slope as possible, and you want to make sure your shadow specifically touches the ground at this part. So, bear punch, but notice how after the bear punch I fall. So what I'm going to do is after I bear punch, I'm going to jump towards the center and just walk back. Now, obviously, if you play this game casually, you know that this is not possible. And the only reason this is possible is because my shadow touching the ground considers me touching the ground. Strange game logic. But anyway, I'll post a link of it in um, the YouTube video if you are curious to explain it a little bit more in detail. But take this as slow as you need to because this is actually pretty difficult. Um, as far as this part, same thing as before, jump up here. Oop too long. Jump up, off, on, off, on. You have to make sure... Oh yeah, I guess one thing I should actually say. On this, on the very last slope before you jump on this area, I actually recommend rolling because when you bear punch it stalls your position, but when you roll it advances your position a little bit. And I guess one thing I should also mention, I mentioned it in my tutorial, this is only ver possible on version 1.0. So if you have a later version of Banjo-Kazooie, version 1.1, or the Xbox Live Arcade version, it doesn't work. Uh, this last section is a little unique. You can actually, instead of doing this in one re-jump up here, which by the way, you can't follow from here, you can kind of bypass it by... a little tricky. 
Rolling up here and then jumping to the right. Watch as I fall down. Okay, never mind. So I'll try that again. It takes some practice. Um, oops, I'll try that again. So if you don't get it, in my opinion, if you don't get it first try, don't even bother with it unless you're just practicing it. There, ah, son of a... I will get this, I promise. Alright, I'm not gonna worry about it. Just, um, if you watch the world record video, you'll see how that's done. Alright, so from here, we just walk, 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 walk. And grab this Jiggy. This is the only Jiggy that'll Q tech, so don't worry about this too much. Aside from... Actually, no, yeah, I guess the very first Jiggy you grab in Grunty's Lair counts. So from here, cancel text, roll from the top right. That's the fastest way to fall. And from here, we're gonna learn Talon Trot. Now, before we grab this Jiggy, I wanna show off two things. I like to zoom out here. Um, notes are just nothing special. We're gonna, before I do anything with this Jinjo, I just wanna show off something. So, pay attention to how the Jinjo follows me. He's gonna, when I jump, he's gonna jump with me, and when I move around, he's gonna move around with me until he fades away. So, it's a nice little feature. Why did I show you that? It's not important until the very end of the game, and I'll show you that again much, much later. Anyway, um, the other thing, well, that was interesting. The other thing I can show off is with every Jiggy you grab, when you grab it in Talent Trot, Kazooie does like a little flutter sort of movement. It does cost a fraction of a second. Um, what we're gonna do instead from now on is cancel the Talent Trot with Ratatat Rat and grab every Jiggy like that while we're in Talent Trot. So it's a little bit faster, and you want to make sure you're as close to the Jiggy as possible. Kind of similar to the stomping in uh, Super Mario 64. Um, so you stomp so that you can grab the, uh, the star. So um, you don't go too high or waste some time. So um, I missed a token back there. That was on purpose. We don't need that token. Uh, that Everything from there was just movement. So from here... Kanga is going to throw oranges. He throws them in a very timely manner. He notices it's like a tempo. What we're going to be able to do, if we're fast enough... Oh. Well, ideally, I should have gotten both of those. That didn't happen, though. You can do those in two oranges. I messed up. So we only want those two platforms for now. We're going to grab this orange, go on. And from here, kind of imagine an imaginary line from this texture. Notice how as soon as I pass that texture, I start holding the orange, and I can't jump or anything. So from here, I'm actually going to speed this up, jump over that invisible line, and go right to Chimpy. So that allows us to skip a lot of time, and once the Jiggy spawns, I'll just grab it. Alright, next special thing is before you talk to Bottles again, grab an egg. This is actually extremely important, because normally, he would cue text there. He didn't this time because I've grabbed eggs in the past. But if there is any sort of text going on while Kanga is talking, then there's a lot of finicky business. And in addition, you don't want to get hit. Um, so obviously I dodged that orange. So what I would do from here, and pretend I hit that. Okay, let's pretend Kanga was hit. And then that would be the third time he'd spawn the Jiggy. I'm going to do something a little different for the last hit. I'm going to go over here, and you can actually... You wouldn't go this slow in a run, but if you aim it at Kanga like this... BAM! It's a little tricky. It's a little tricky to hit. It's kind of like not down left, but not left exactly, as far as the angle. It just takes some practice. I like to shoot three eggs and just kind of hope it works. So anyway, uh, don't fall. Hit the witch switch. We're not going to use ticker for that, obviously, the transformation. We're just going to grab that. Uh, roll down left. Grab the Jiggy, and I'm just going to hold right for the last platform for a fraction of a second. Land, cancel all the text. Some of the text um, triggers certain actions, so in pretty much every scenario, you will always want to cancel text as soon as possible. Or it might delay other actions. So from here, we're going to grab this. Grab the Jinjo, and this is where it gets interesting. We're going to grab this Honeycomb right up there. Notice that there's a little line texture right there. We're going to jump just to the left of that, and then jump twice while on there. 
Oh, or I'll fall in the water. Let's try it again. Oh, one, two, and we're up there. That does take some practice. But notice at the vis jump, I kind of stalled a little bit. I didn't jump right when I got on the rock or the wall. One, two. That just helps you get a little bit more distance to get up there. So from there, grab this, and we're going to slide off and let go of Z as we fall. That allows us to do a quick dive. And quick diving lets us get to the bottom of the water a lot faster than just swimming. Uh, from here, jump, jump. Kind of abusing that same slope rule as before. Jump, jump. And just get up here and grab the jiggy. Grab these three notes, and pretty much everything from here is almost finished. We're gonna stop this guy. We're gonna get this for the Jinjo, the last uh, Jinjo. Spawns a token. Stomp this while that's doing its little thing. Kill this guy. And there's actually a little bit of a pause animation if you're fast enough to grab it. Um, that's normal. It's only because of the lag that's associated to grabbing the Jinjo. Don't worry about that. Um, the problem is, it can also trigger some lag over here. I won't get it because I'm doing this very slow on purpose. But the faster runners will often hit a little bit of lag once they grab this Jiggy. And it's kind of random. We're not really sure why. It has to do with Jinjo text, probably. Or the Jinjo Jiggy Q. So anyway, enough about that. From here, just um, wait for it to go to you. Shoot one, move right. Shoot one, move right. Shoot one, move right. It does take some practice. Jump up here. Don't high jump, just use the stomp recoil to grab that. Fall off, and then shoot one or two eggs, and then I just like to jump from here, make sure I can minimize the chances of that weird delay. Grab the four notes we skipped way, way long ago. Grab this Momo token. Jump up here and high jump for easy jiggy, nothing special. And normally when you talent trot, you obviously can't move while you're doing anything. But we're going to take advantage of the Talent Shot animation. If you fall off and Talent Shot, you actually kind of kill two birds with stone, one stone. Movement and entering Talent Shot. So, we don't want to wake up Mumbo because that cues text and it makes us freeze in place. So just go around and make sure to collect those notes. Just try and avoid the green area. Alright, uh, last Jiggy is this one right here, number 10. This is a longer dance sequence than usual because it's the 10th one supposed to like celebrate. We've got all of them. For pretty much all except for one other level, we're gonna be skipping that dance using a variety of interesting tricks. Jump down, jump down. That guy's in my way. I'm gonna go the other way. You, normally I'd go right, but that didn't. And from here, we're actually gonna cancel Talon Shot and exit the level. Tex is gonna come up, so I'm gonna cancel it. And the reason I got out of Talon Trot is because I'm going to immediately high jump onto that. If we left the level in Talon Trot, I'd have to wait for Kazooie to go out of Talon Trot and then high jump. So up here, stall, jump away, jump forward. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'll take that a little slower. So anyway, what I'm going to do is stall my position, abuse the shadow trick, AAB. And what that does is it advances our position and then stalls us with the roll. So, re jump one. And then I'm gonna high jump here and then extend my position even more. I explained this a little bit uh, better in my tutorial. So, I'll let you watch that. But you can either do this last part with the high jump or just a jump. And then we're just gonna slide down, go into Talon Shot and then go right to the 50 note door. Remember that's 50 note, it's important for furnace fun. Totally important. Um, just to make sure, it, this is kind of the exception to the rule, but normally when you hit a note door, I'll show you actually. Kazooie does like a little flutter like before. So every time you hit a note door and a jiggy, Kazooie um, does like a little flutter and you want to avoid that. So. As often as possible, you want to try and get out of that talent shot, either with rat attack rapping or just walking. Alright, so open Treasure Trove Cove, nothing special. I skipped a trick, um, a very, very minor trick that I'll show you guys later. It's pretty insignificant right now, but there's going to be plenty of opportunities to show it off. Uh, just hold down. Don't even bother with the camera. Just hold down and 
Hold A on that last jump, make sure you make that. Moving, moving, moving. One, two, three, four. And then on this last one, we're gonna jump. We actually wanna count, well, that was pretty slow, but ideally you would just jump in there or land on the side and cancel a talent trot because that's technically a little faster. So first thing we wanna do now is grab these four notes, jump off the pier and grab this blue Jinjo. Alright, and then after that, we want to go straight to the left tree. We're going to grab these four notes. Um, there's no real good way to collect all these notes. As you can tell, I screwed that up. If you want to grab in Talon Trot, that's fine. If you want to grab them just on foot, that's fine too. Um, the trees are a little finicky. As I said before, while swimming, make sure you hold R. Uh, grab this guy. By the way, best voice in the game. Second best, I'm sorry. We'll see the best voice later. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to turn about 15 degrees to the left, I guess right, depending on your point of view, and high jump up to this tree. And we're going to collect these notes as well. And that puts us in a good position to jump over here and poop leakies, or poop eggs into leaky. Now, leaky is actually off to my right. If I were to poop an egg right now... Exactly. So, the angle that I'm using is holding down and left, and it looks like Banjo's off that way a little bit. What I didn't adjust the camera while I'm moving to the tree. I just held R and just let it do its own thing. It, this takes some practice. Um, there's no uniform practice for this. Um, from here, you're actually gonna poop an egg and then roll to bottles. I would have hate I would have gotten that if I was a little bit faster. I've been pretty bad with that lately. But ideally what you want to do is cancel the bottles text with the leaky. And we call that the leaky skip. I'll as I said before, I'll post videos of this or I'll everything is shown on my uh, on It's on it's on my YouTube channel. I'll post a link of it. Talk to bottles for flight. I'll grab this token up here. Stomp that, stomp that, get off of it, and we want to enter Talent Trot with the same falling animation. And then from there, we what we literally want to do is just land on the box and then fall. I'll show that one more time. So we land on here, and what it's going to look like is we have a little bit of time before we start sliding, so just land and then fall off, and that'll give us the quick dive. You don't want to fall right when you land on the box, because that won't give you the quick dive. Well, still pretty good, actually. I'll try it one more time, just messing up. So, that was right there, you wouldn't go deep at all. So, from here, jump and stomp, that'll give us a little more distance. I know it's a little faster than high jump. So, from here, give the gold to Blubber, and if you're really lucky, you'll be able to grab the Jiggy at where it spawns. And that's actually really fast, but don't count on that every run, it's pretty much random. Jump up here. Alright, this is probably one of the hardest parts for some people. I'm going to break it down really easily. Alright, so what I'm going to do... Flap six times. Hold down for two flaps. Flap until I get kind of close to the note, and then hold left. Once I grab the note, I'm going to use one feather, and I'm just going to fly straight until I get to the chest. I'm going to hold back, and once the chest, chest closes, I hit A. I should grab the Jiggy with my feet, and then I'll fly out of the chest. And I'll go from there. So, a little refresher. Fly. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. And then from here, hold left. And then fly. If you ever hit the ceiling of that alcove, this trick will not work, and you'll pretty much have to use another feather or do another approach. So make sure you're always holding R, fly into the chest. He's gonna close, open his mouth again, just hold back a little bit. This is when I would use a feather, I'm not really sure why I hit start. So grab the Jiggy, fly over here, and once the Jinjo hits the ceiling of the TV screen, hold down, this is the way I do it. It's Everyone uses a slightly different path, this is what I do. Hold down and press A, you should grab the Jiggy, or the Jinjo, excuse me, so BAM! Use four feathers, wait until 
a, like a second or two, like when the yellow Jinjo's head is near the top of the TV screen, and use one more feather. And then from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven feathers. And ideally, you would grab that while you're in flight. So, that does take practice, but it's very easy to get the hang of, I promise. So, from there, grab the notes, hit the switch, nothing special. Talent Trot, I like to zoom out here. Grab these notes. Oops. Don't, don't miss the notes. This is 100% after all. Um, from here, this is a kind of a new setup for this part, but what we're going to do is from here, we're just going to walk off and get hit once. And after we get hit, we're just going to flutter. If you can grab those feathers, that's great. Not a big deal. Jump over here, do the, uh, the, the pink Jinjo, the purple Jinjo. Um, grab these. This is cycle-based, so if you can beat the cycle, you won't have to wait too much. I'll explain what a cycle is in detail later. And we're just going to walk over here. I'm sure- I'm assuming most of you know what a cycle is, but it doesn't hurt to explain it a little bit more when it actually matters. Stomp this X. I like to zoom in here, actually. Uh, use R to adjust the camera if you need to. Like I said, this is what I mean by experimenting with the camera. I'm doing a lot of crazy stuff. You don't have to do this. That was kind of tricky. Uh, get up here, and we're gonna quick dive. Just while it's sliding, walk off. That was a strange angle, it'll go in. Go up. And this part coming up, there's a crab right below us. This is deceivingly tricky. You want to grab all three notes without getting hit by this crab. And if you're not very fast, you will get hit by this crab. Like that. You don't want to get hit, and you want to make sure, keep an eye on your health. I have four health. Ideally, you want to have five health here. So if I didn't get hit by the crab, I would have been just fine. And I'll explain why later. I Actually, four health could have worked, I lied. So from here, actually I should probably explain what's happening. Um, so I enter flight, I'm going to be grabbing the orange Jinjo, which is the last Jinjo you, you can see. It's going to spawn a Jiggy. I'm going to grab the Jiggy in the alcove while I'm in flight. And then I'm going to grab, fly up and grab the Jinjo Jiggy. So the, my setup here is wait until the orange Jinjo is at the top of the TV, like his head is concealed. And then, as soon as that happens, just hold de uh, up and a er, and press A for one feather. And a lot of people have different setups for this alcove jiggy. It's really going to be based on how you feel with it. What I like to do is try not to cling too close to the wall on the way down. Because that gives you a lot more control and you a lot more vision. So anyway, flying, flying, flying. Right here. So notice he just kind of grabs it with his arm. Just like... Touches it, that's all you need. And then from here, I'm just gonna keep holding down until I get lower. So, like I said, that part is honestly very difficult. That's gonna take you a lot of practice. So from there, three feathers, one more, and then stomp. The next, the next item we're gonna grab is this honeycomb over here. It's actually a very tricky quick dive. If you need to stomp, that's fine. But literally, we're gonna touch the, the ground for a split second, and then slide off and let go of Z. And if I was better, I would have actually grabbed that. But unfortunately, I was not in the right position. And I got sniped by Snacker. What a jerk. Alright. Um, another tricky part. High jump up here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of what of the slight invincibility we, ha we have during the text. So we're gonna walk off, Jump in and right at that rat. Again, I'll post a link of this in detail so that you can see what's going on, or I'll just post it in my about me section, or of the uh, about the video details. Excuse me. So we kill Nipper really quick, and then we walk in. What you're gonna do is just you have to rat a tat rap in order to hit him. And when you jump in, when you jump in, so we jump in this way. Rat a tat rap attacks that way, and we're just basically do. This is all we're doing inside Nipper. Like I said, it's a little hard to show. Uh, we're gonna go over here. Uh-oh. And sometimes that happens when you grab that Jiggy, the snippets are in a really bad place. 
So that's why we like to go in here with at least three health, because they can double tap you, and if you're at two health, you basically die. And that's not fun, especially because you lose all your notes. Go, go, go. Shock Spring up here. Actually, there's a little trick that I should show off. Um, normally, what you would like to do is... Oops. Ah. So what you would like to do is, in this situation, you want to Talon Trot immediately. There's a little bit of finicky business as far as using Z with Shock Spring, so what you should do, and what I should practice more to be honest, Shock Spring, and as soon as you land again, hold Z, and then you can immediately just go straight into Talon Trot, because you're already holding Z. You, there's a lot of funny business if you don't press buttons in the right order, and it really throws you off sometimes. Like, you might accidentally stomp, beat barge, um, stomp again, wonder wing even, if you're not careful. And those are expensive feathers. So from here, this is another tricky one. Um, not as tricky as the second flight. This is the last flight section, by the way. Um, what you want to do is fly until the Momo token is right above you. And then you'll hit A. Kazooie's going to flap faster than normal when she goes up. You want to wait for two of those flaps and immediately after you use the feather, hold down. You should use... Or that should give you a good angle to... Um, that should give you a good angle to grab all three notes that are above the shock spring pad. And then you want to fly to the alcove jiggy while not landing. So I'll do it one... I'll show you off. We're going to fly to the token. One, two, and then we're going to hold down. I actually realized I didn't phrase that right. So after two flaps, you would hold down. Don't hold down immediately after you use the feather. So grab that. That takes a little bit of practice. It's honestly not as difficult as the other ones. Uh, we're going to fly over here to the honeycomb jiggy. <laughs> honeycomb piece, excuse me, on a jiggy. Grab this note and stomp. You should hypothetically kill both the crab and hit the X. So, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to grab this health. But ideally, you want to do it with two. Oh, well, I'm going to get one more apparently. Um, you want to do this part with two health. So, let's see if I can grab that note without. Okay. Jump down, spam A, because you'll either land in the water or you'll um, cancel it. Get that. Normally you would kill the crab. I actually got really lucky there. You'd kill the crab in the same way you kill or hit the X. And if you spam one egg right away, the chest is technically not loaded, so it won't hit. Most people like to use uh, two eggs for that part. And this part is pretty straightforward. Just spell Banjo Kazooie. Nothing crazy. Um, as far as timing for this. The best time I've seen and gotten is uh, that time ending in 74. 73 is a pretty good time. Um, obviously, anything less than that is considered slow. There are different ways that you can hit the uh, order of the buttons, or the letters, excuse me, but this is what I consider the fastest. If you're comfortable with something else, by all means, do that. So, see there, I got a 73. From here, what we're going to do, so if we go to our view totals, Notice how I have all 100 notes, all two honeycombs, but nine jiggies, and the 10th one is right there. What I'm going to do is abuse, the, is abuse the death abuse system, or the death system. It'll take us right back to the entrance, and since I already have all 100 notes, I don't have to worry about recollecting the notes. So what I'm going to do is just move right into the snippet. One, two, jump, stomp, and then grab the jiggy, and then die. If you need to, you can high jump. I would not recommend it, though. Um, from here, Talon Trot, this is important, and exit the level. You can either exit the level by jumping, and that'll just take us out, or moving back and forth. Um, either or, it's about the same. Moving back and forth is ideally faster. The reason we want to Talon Trot is because if we hold back continuously, we'll be able to move immediately. So you want to exit pretty much every level except for two of them in Talon Trot. So, the reason we grab these feathers is the entire route, and I'll grab an extra one, the entire route is very starved on feathers, so you constantly want to keep an eye on your feather count. Your egg count is also, eh, I mean, your egg count is also pretty critical, and 
your 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 gold feather count is very important. So I'm gonna show off something really quickly. Grunty's gonna talk to me right about now. Right about now? Okay, she might have already talked to me, so I should have paid attention to that. My bad. Um, what I was hoping to show off is Gruntilda's texts. Um, it's just like, oh man, I'm watching you go through the level and I'm gonna make a rhyme. That's actually, that's actually based on a time cue. That is not random. She will talk in the same increments of time every time. So that gives you a nice visual indicator for where you are in the run. As far as just Grunty's Lair, not the levels. So from here, we activate Clinker's Cavern. Go, go, go. Um, nothing crazy here. Just jump, jump, cancel the rat attack rap, go into. Oh, whoops. Actually, not high jump there. I high jump here. Uh, and then from here, jump, rat it, or jump flutter. And this, the switch, as far as hitting the switches, notice how my toes aren't even on the switch, it looks like. That's all I need. I just need my toes on the switch. It's very, very sensitive as far as making sure you hit that switch. And from here, this is where I actually encourage experimenting with the uh, camera. If you need it behind you, that's fine. If you want it in front of you, that's fine too. Notice how my toes, once again, aren't on the switch. So, from here, this is actually, in my opinion, one of the harder levels to learn. Um, the reason for that is a lot of stuff is based on cycles. Especially the beginning, probably the hardest part for a newcomer to learn. There's two different types of cycles in the very beginning. There's a harder cycle and a, an easier cycle. The harder cycle will save you anywhere between 5 to 11 seconds, so for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to go purposely with the easier and slightly outdated route. So immediately, well it doesn't matter if I'm in talent shot or not because I spawn without it. So from here, you have to basically copy everything I do at the speed I do it with some leeway. So I apologize if that sounds a little intimidating, but I promise it's not terrible. And if I mess it up, I'll just redo the level. So talent shot, jump off. Change the camera if you want. Hold Z so that you can immediately enter Talent Trot. And just keep going. Just go as fast as you can. Just grab as. Doesn't even matter what you grab, even though you are starved for feathers. Gold feathers, you're gonna be getting 10 regardless by the time you learn the move. Be careful when you press B there, because if you press B too soon, you'll actually be swinging backwards. From here, uh, Clanker will talk to you, but since you're already holding L and, or R and B, just hit L. Like, nothing special. From here, we're gonna be grabbing the green Jinjo and swimming backwards, essentially. I can't really give a direction. It's gonna be technically to the left of the Jinjo. So, as far as the cycle, we're gonna see it. Especially because this is pretty quick. So, grab the Jinjo. And after we collect these two notes, wait for it, Gloop is going to put a bubble right in front of us. We're going to swim through the key after we collect the notes, and as soon as we collect the last note, there's another bubble we're going to grab. It's going to be pretty much positioned perfectly. This is the reason why being faster actually matters, because you want the positions of these Gloop bubbles to be predictable. So. There we go. Oh, okay, I did grab it. It's okay, it's not perfect as far as your movement. You don't have to be like super, super fast. So back, forth, back, forth. This cutscene does take a little time. Um, I can't think of anything to talk about right now, especially cause, I mean, as I've mentioned before, this level is pretty much all about cycles. And if you see Gloop right here, that actually means you are a little slow. Not a big deal. So we're gonna grab this note. Grab three more notes. So grab four notes after the key. And then right here, bubble. Perfect. And from here, this is kind of a stressful part of the run. 
what we're gonna do is we're not gonna we're not gonna emerge for air. We're gonna go straight for the Jinjo, the Jinjo in the green pipe. We have enough air for this, but it is cutting it close. If you are afraid of drowning here, I actually encourage you to go back up for air, unless time is of an issue. So swim, turn around because we do need those notes, and I'm actually gonna hit this with flying colors. This is not even what I consider close. And from here, we're gonna go up and flutter up here for these little sections. You can either do this the way I'm doing it, or the faster way to do it is not ex or entering Talent Rot and getting it like that. So down here, and here's another smaller, less extreme example of a, a cycle. So notice, I can only shoot an egg like that while the tooth is exposed. If the tooth is underwater and not open, I can't enter it. So if I miss those eggs, I'm out of luck. It doesn't matter if he goes underwater now, because I can just enter the tooth. So that's just a quick, very basic example of a cycle. So from here, we're going to take advantage of that movement we I told you before. Walk off Talon Trot, or just pff, do that. Don't do that. Just Talon Trot and walk off if you need to. Collect these notes. We're going to be at note total 32. Not very significant, but just, I guess, something to remember. And we're going to go to the rings. Um, the rings activate a timer, and from the countdown, what is considered a very good rings, and I've only seen a few people do it, is a 22 finishing time. I, I uh, encourage you to go for a 20. 21 is a really good time, 22 is pretty much perfect. And pretty much the exception to, uh, or one of the special movements is up here. You want to high jump to this and land on it, because that jump off is actually faster than going through the ring normally. It's also very difficult. So from there... So this is probably only because I stalled a little bit, gonna be an 18. I'm sorry, a 20. So that's... Even though I took my time, that's just to show you what a 20 can do. Or what a 20 looks like, excuse me. Grab this egg, if you need it, which you will, and grab these notes, and once we get out of here, we're based on a cycle immediately, so we have to get out of here. Jump up. If you have time, grab these two notes, and we're going to wait on here. Hold forward. One, two, three notes. We're going to leave that note later, because it's actually on the way, and grab this jiggy. Hold down, and grab this. You, we don't actually have to worry about the blowhole because the cycle resets once we grab that jiggy. We're gonna go on the left fin, cancel, kill this guy. And all this is also based on a cycle. For newcomers, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Go down here, and you want to rat a tap rat really low to the ground so that you can hit that great. Grab these notes, uh, try not to fall off. Notice, that was actually in a, a special scenario. When I Talon Trot, and I cancel it, the attack still comes out. So that's why that worked. So there's actually two ways to do this part. You can either wait for the fin to come up, which is actually pretty slow. So normally I would go into the fin and jump on it. Or you can go wait, try and rat a tat wrap in this corner. It's very finicky. It's based on some trivial movement in the water. If you can get it, that's great. Otherwise, just wait for the fin. Or Ideally, you would want to attempt the corner side twice, or the corner jump twice, I guess, before you just kind of go onto the fin, because that's the timing it takes. So from here, don't talent trot, just roll in, hold back, flutter, and then jump, or stomp, excuse me. That'll hit the switch. If you just stomp as soon as you go in, actually, really quickly, one, two, three, four left, five right, four left. That's all based on a cycle. That's why I didn't wait to explain it. What you want to do is, after you hit the switch, immediately go into Talon Trot, collect, four, uh, collect three notes. Um, on the fourth, you want to move left. On the fifth, you want to move right. And on the sixth, you want to move left. So you might have to go back and re-watch that, but I, I tried to basically explain what was going on. So from here, just don't hit the tentacle. And we're going to actually, not Pelican Dive exactly, but we're going to... Try and grab this Jiggy with our feet. There we go. And we're gonna go talk to Bottles right now. 
So the reason we have so many gold feathers and we don't have to worry about it for this level is because as soon as we talk to bottles, we get five for free. Let's assume I didn't have those four before. Um, there are five more all the way over there. So we're gonna be at ten no matter what. Oh, apparently... Did I miss the honeycomb? I just realized that. I missed the honeycomb, that's interesting. Um, I'll grab that... That's silly. I'll grab that as soon as I can, but for now, just keep going. Um, so from here, we actually want to stay in this corner area, because we're not going to get hit no matter how long we stay. And we're just going to grab that note, like, as quickly as we can. A little faster version of it. Oh, that's what happens if you're not fast enough. And it doesn't matter if you miss the note on the way. Just um, grab the note there. Uh, jump and jump, nothing special, go to the box. Uh, here's a little trick that I like to do. Um, when you roll, you actually continue rolling when you high jump. So I'll, I'll show you. Notice how Banjo kept moving while I was doing the high jump animation. It's not until he actually enters the high jump animation, the flat flip I think it's called, until he loses all of his movement. So if you just walk into this, roll, and then high jump, you don't even have to, like, worry about jump, and then just spam B to enter the water. It's a little... it's an interesting trick that I came up with. I don't see people doing it too often, and to be honest, it's pretty trivial. You don't have to do it. So... Do, 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 do. So, unfortunately, I'm gonna waste a little bit of time just grab this honeycomb, because that is part of 100%. Kind of silly, makes me look a little bit of an amateur. But I was supposed to grab the honeycomb when I hit that grate right here. There we go. I don't know if I'll be able to catch this cycle. Okay, good. Okay, so let's pretend I spawned. Actually, I think I'm. On the, uh, no, yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to be on the other side. Uh, come on. Whatever. I'll just, um, fast forward a little bit. I'll just go straight. Kind of silly mistake to make. Alright, so I guess pretend all of that didn't happen. I just wanted to grab it because that is the technical definition of 100%. Alright, so from here... Like before, we're just gonna rat a tat rat right up here. Grab these notes, and we're gonna grab that jiggy out of canceling the talent trial with rat a tat rat. We're gonna grab these notes, climb up the tail. If you don't feel confident with jumping, because it's actually pretty easy to slide off, don't do that. Hit that pretty high and spam A. I've occasionally experienced missed inputs there, I'm not really sure why. But it does happen from time to time. That's why I like to hit the grate really high. So from here, kill this guy. If you hadn't grabbed health up to that point, that should be the first time. So from here, quick dive. And we're gonna go straight to mutant snippets. So the first thing about mutant snippets, before I even say anything, we're gonna kill the first two with the stomp. And you only wanna go so far. Like this is as far as you wanna go. Because if you move in more, like if you try and aggro, they'll just run away. So just stay here, move a little to the right or left if you need to, and stomp. From here, we're going to kill this guy with two eggs. And, when, and if I see him, kill that guy with two eggs. Ah. It's actually possible to get all the way to the Jiggy in that scenario before it even spawns. But unfortunately, I got hit by the Snippet. So, grab these last four notes, and this is pretty much where Clanker's Cavern ends. Because from here, we're going to do one giant swim, and then we're going to death warp. Alright, so first thing we're going to do in this swim, and it's very possible to do this. Um, go to this pipe on the left, and grab this jiggy, and then we're going to turn around and swim out. Something that I should mention is that... In addition to a bunch of other things, the uh, if you decide to run this on emulator, 
the swimming air, uh, the air counter, I suppose, I should say. Air counter? Yeah, I'll just call it the air counter. It ticks faster on emulator. So you actually have slightly less time on emulator to do this. So we're gonna swim down here. And ideally we want to grab the second to last note before we drop down to one bar of health. Or one air counter of health. So we're definitely gonna grab this. And we're just gonna go hold straight back and left or straight back and right, excuse me. And we're gonna grab this token. And I like to swim down for no reason. Some people like to wait there. You can do whatever you want. You have about best case scenario, you have a couple of seconds to kill. So, like before, Talon Trot, and then left, right. And we're done with Clankers, that's it. So, except for that little hiccup, not terrible. So, jump, jump, jump. Cancel Talon Trot, high jump. This is actually tricky. Um, I like to go literally around this guy, like this. And technically, um, when you land, the hitbox for Kazooie and Banjo drop down a little bit. You can kind of take advantage of that. It's still pretty tricky. Um, if you don't feel confident, I suggest you kill him instead. Um, don't Talon Trot here, because it's actually not a good way to utilize the Talon Trot speed. Because if you think about it, Talon Trot takes about... Not even a second to go into, but by the time you finish that Talon Trot animation, you're already, like, halfway into the water. Oops. Just make sure you hit Z for the rest of these. Because you learn how to put all the puzzle pieces in one, in one uh, button press when you're doing clankers. So don't talent trot here either, just roll, flutter, and get out of there. If you need to, or if you think talent trotting is faster, I implore you to do that instead. One thing I will encourage people to do is just experiment. Like once you get comfortable with running this game, just do whatever you do best. Even if it's slower in the end, then, you know, you learn something new. Like I said, like, including camera controls, uh, just experiment with anything, even strategies. That's how optimizations are found. Um, like before with this note door, cancel Talon Trot with Ratatat Rap and grab it. So, a little trick that I didn't show off before is a quick Talon Trot. So, notice, when I cue the Talon Trot, it takes time to go into it, obviously. If you can cue the Talon Trot with the slide, since when you hold Z you press or you slide a little bit, if you can cue that Talon Trot right when you hit the loading zone... Ah! I'll try it one more time. And I'll walk... okay. If you can cue that Talon Trot right when you hit the loading zone... If I can do it. One more time. There we go. I'll just go right into the Talon Trot. So, it saves about a second or two, M maybe about a second. It's not a huge deal if you miss it, but it is optimizations. So from here, just hold down right, do some jumping, and this is normal. You just want to cut the corners, literally. I like to zoom out. Well, actually, forget zooming out. And from here, we're going to take advantage of that same slope rule. So as long as our shadow hits the center of this area, we'll never slide down. So, if you need to practice this, you can just, as soon as you hit the corner of the pipe, just walk off. So anyway, go over here. And open this up. And just like before, we're going to go out the same way we came in. Occasionally, if you jump in a really weird position, you'll hear the boots telling you you can't wear them yet. That means um, you jumped really high for some reason. And right here, um, we're going to do Bubble Club Swamp. So the first thing we're going to do is immediately to our left, there's a croc. If we walk off over here, we can actually, if we time it, we can hit that croc. Ideally, you do it faster. Um, something else I should mention is, once I cancel this text, if I don't hold Z, if I don't hold Z, I'll actually exit Talent Trot. So you want to make sure, after you cancel Talent Trot, you hold Z. I don't know how you're going to manage it. What I like to do is when I hold this position, let's see if I can show it on the camera, I use my uh, ring finger to hold the button. 
If you do if you do it like this, you can still use the ring finger. My fingers are actually pretty small, so this should be easier for a lot of you. So once you get in a situation where you can start holding Z, switch to your uh, your uh, index finger and then just start going again. So cancel Talent Trot, do that. I guess one thing I should also mention is Bottles talks to you a total of up to three times. One to introduce the move, one to refill your health, and one to say you've learned all of my moves. So that's just something to keep in mind, he's very consistent with that. Go over here, grab that Jinjo, go back, grab those notes, and we're gonna go left to the egg. So. We don't even need this leaf boat, we're just gonna jump over here. This is actually a faster way to do this, but it requires being either really fast or really ballsy. So we're not gonna worry about that for now. And we're gonna just take advantage of not getting hurt, oops. Um, once you get hurt by a damage source, you don't get hurt by it for another couple of seconds, so we can take advantage of that. And we're gonna do that a lot throughout this level. So once we're up here, stomp the first one. We're actually not gonna fall off. If you roll and then you jump, you actually have a mid-air jump. It looks like I'm jumping in mid-air. Oops. And what you can do, you can utilize that by jumping and then right attack wrapping in the other way. Like that. And then you just go right back on the egg. You can do that anywhere. Just if you wait too long, then you technically lose your jump. You have to roll you have to jump while you're in the roll. From here, stomp again. You can only hit this X by beat barge. And then X over here. So, goodbye, Leaf Boat. I'm not gonna hit you anyway. Even though I could, I'm gonna choose not to. I'm gonna go this way. And yes, even though we've only grabbed one Jiggy so far, it's normally uh, at three health there. Just hit this switch. And a lot of people do this differently and might have tr uh, trouble with um, this kind of area. This is something I've done as a kid. I don't recommend it unless you wanna experiment. Hold R at these parts. This is what I do, and everyone can do whatever. Um, so hit that talent shot, there's no text, so you're fine. I'm gonna hold R here again. Grab this token, I'm actually gonna zoom out, because why not? Continue holding R. Uh, this does take some practice, this is just comfortable for me. And then even here, like, I'm still holding R. I'm just a note though, I'll go back for it. So really quickly, I'm going to grab this note. And then from here, we're going to go all the way to this uh, the gold flippets. We're going to get out of Talent Trot normally. Gold Feather, jump. Go to the top, kill that one. Go to the bottom, kill that one. And then we're going to try, after we kill this one, to grab the Jiggy that spawns around here. So... We missed it. Not a big deal. We're going to grab this later to skip the Jiggy Jig as the croc. So go over here, and we're going to do hut jumps. These are also a little different, or a little difficult, excuse me. We want to go right here, talent trot, jump, and then right attack rap at the, at the peak of our jump. You don't need a running start because how this works is as soon as you jump, you already hit your maximum velocity. Like no acceleration, zero to 60. So you just go right to the peak, jump, and then right attack rap. Well, I screw that up. Dang. All right, I'll try it one more time. You will actually, um, like I said, this is a difficult part. It does take some practice. And if you do need a running start, then by all means do that. There you go. Same trick in uh, Momo's Mountain. Just make sure you do it in one jump. Uh, the stomping of the HUD, I should uh, clarify that. Talent Trot, grab these three notes. Don't be a klutz and miss them. We actually are going to stomp this note because while it is possible to do this the special way, it's very difficult and one of the hardest ones to hit. There we go. So I'm gonna try and do this how pretty much everyone else does it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over here, and then right attack wrap, and then shoot an egg and roll off. And what that does is it transports us basically to the bottom because we're considered falling in that situation. So we can just take advantage of that temporary invincibility again. As of right now, I have two health. We ideally want to be at 4 by the time we start heading to uh, Mr. Vile, so I'm going to grab these 2 health for now. 
I'll probably need to grab one more later. So, here, this is actually a deceivingly tricky jump again. For this, you want to hold A, and then after you hit A, you want to immediately start holding forward. So, one, two. If you hold A and forward at the same time, this jump will not work. You'll just be stuck in between the eyes. So, one, two. That's it. Um, ideally, also, when you grab the boots, you want to exit Talon Trot. It's not a huge time waster if you don't, and um, to be honest, I don't recommend it for the other boots we're going to grab because we might actually get hit and that kind of wastes time. So from here, what we're going to do is we're not going to climb all the way to the top. Once we're about here, just jump. Because if you climb all the way to the top, which you're about to see, there's a little bit of an animation right here, and I can't do anything about that. And it's pretty slow. Oops. For the top one, just do that. Roll, jump over here. Notice how I did that mid-air jump again. And then enter Talon Trot again, after you shoot the egg if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. Don't get sniped by the mosquito, he's a jerk. We're gonna go over here. Avoid that jiggy. It's not very important. Just waste time. And we're gonna stomp Tank Tut's two left feet. Technically his right feet, but from our perspective, whatever. We're gonna go over here. For the sake of showing this off, I'm gonna kill that guy. And as soon as I hit, or as soon as I shoot my egg, which keep in mind you wanna do it while his mouth is closed, not open, we're gonna jump to where he is. So, bam, and then right there. Notice how I grab the jiggy immediately. Okay, go to the orange Jincho. Stun the last two feet. And even though he's gonna spawn a Jiggy, we're not gonna grab it until later. Once again, Talon Trot, holding Z with my uh, ring finger, cancel text. Notice how I still have not exited Talon Trot, and then just jump in, and then switch to my index finger. Do, do, do. Grab these three notes. By the way, something I haven't mentioned about Mumbo tokens, I recommend for your first time grabbing as many tokens as you know exist, but this is actually a pretty strict Mumbo token route. It's not terribly strict. You can play around with it a little, but I would not recommend it. Anyway, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hold Z here with my ring finger again. And we're going to remember, this is the tip up <clears throat> memorization pattern. Yellow, purple, cyan. I do have to remember this, actually. So cancel talent, or cancel text. Go over here. And remember, every time you get one wrong, you do lose health. So you have to be careful. And notice how... Like, I could have gone from red, or yellow to red, yellow to blue, that would have been ideal, but since I went from yellow to purple to cyan, like, that's a lot of time that I'm losing just because of random, uh, just because of the randomness. It happens, just something you have to, to accept. And for the last section, I'm not going to do it for this one, for the last section, I actually recommend writing it down. Do whatever annotation is comfortable to you. So, blue, cyan, yellow. Cyan yellow. That was considered a very, very good pattern. Because we don't have to go very far for any of these. And for this one, you're going to hear a little bit of typing, because I like to type this down. It, has, it helps if you're, you know, got a keyboard around. So pink, blue, red, cyan. Blue, red, blue. All right. So, let's see what we got. Pink, blue. Good. Red, cyan. The cyan is kind of far. To blue, to red, and blue. So that was considered a pretty good pattern overall. I've seen people say light blue, I've seen people say cyan, just use whatever is comfortable to you. So as soon as you cancel that text, the Jiggy appears. Remember, you want to cancel text immediately. Uh. Excuse me. Jump up here, grab the honeycomb. You can stomp if you think it's faster, which it is actually, and then grab the Jiggy. Grab these three notes. And then we're immediately going to grab this Jiggy. So remember how I said before, for this next part, we want to be at three health. If you're a beginner, you want to be at 5 health. If you're a beginner, you I recommend you press start and check your health. How do I know that I have 3 health right now? 
Because if I get damaged right now, I'm at two health. My health counter is not gonna go away until I grab three or more, or until I grab one more health counter. So I'll show it really quickly. I'm gonna grab this health. And then health counter goes away. So if you don't see your health, assume you have at least three health. Otherwise, you'll know how much health you have. So from here, this is the part I don't recommend canceling Town Trot on. I'm gonna go over here, grab all the notes on our way. This is pretty much nothing special. Um, some people, me specifically, like the jump here. Just kind of like what I was doing with Town Trot. In fact, I should probably explain that a while ago. I'll explain that at the end of this level. Um, but it's not very ideal to jump because it doesn't really save you any time. It just helps you turn corners faster. That's it. So from here, we're going to actually cancel our boots right now. And we're going to go right to the switch. Now, I know this seems counterintuitive, but I do not recommend uh, changing the camera. Just work with whatever angle you got. It does take some practice. And if you can, grab some eggs. If you need to do it on foot too, in fact, what you could do is just like roll, jump, flutter. And I recommend just paying attention to your shadow, because that'll tell you whether or not you're on the platform technically. So for these last few notes, we're going to jump to it. And this is why we have three health. So we're going to go from three health to two health to one health. And we're not going to grab any more health. We're going to grab this Momo token. By the end of, um, by the time we enter this, we should be at 17 tokens. Now, remember, I'm holding Z with my ring finger. So jump up here. Don't land on the fire. Just don't. Uh, grab the honeycomb and grab that token. Cancel talent trot and ooh wow. So if your mumbo token count does not go down, you turn into a washing machine. One of three things could happen. That is one of them. It's about an estimated one in forty chance. So it's kind of a silly way to lose time, but it should almost never happen. So. As far as movement with the alligator, if you hit B, you move slightly faster. This is actually going to be pretty useful for Vile. Don't get sniped by the buzz bomb. Alright, so it's going to be very silly if I lose here because then I'd have to start this all over again. We'll see what happens though. So anyway, here we go. This is considered one of the hardest mini games in the world. Not really, but... So what we're going to do, before I even start, I'm just going to say this. Mr. Vile is very good at rubber banding. So, what that means is if I'm really far ahead, he's gonna be really fast. And if I'm really far behind, he's gonna go really slow. The rubber band works both ways, similar to Mario Kart 64. So, when I talk to Vile, don't cancel this text. Let it run through, because if we cancel the text, he's gonna think I don't wanna play his game. Kind of a jerk. So, let the text go through, just hold A to speed it up. Hit B, and we're going to take advantage of this rubber banding immediately. We're going to run over here. Oh, whoops. Did I just hit the wrong button again? I'm, I'm Oops. All right, make sure you hit A and not B to start the game. Now cancel text. We're going to go over here and grab this token. You can grab these notes too. It's honestly not a big deal. And I'm just going to go crazy. He looks like an intimidating score right now. But I really want these eggs and feathers, so who cares? And once I- you can get more if you want, but I'm just gonna grab these yumblies and, and try and come back. So notice he's kind of far ahead right now. I'm catching up slowly but surely. Uh-oh. 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 Little advice, you generally want to know where Vile is at all times, because that will usually indicate where you should be going. In addition to that, like, notice how I just ate that right above him? You kind of have a wall in which you can eat, and you eat the Yumblies faster than he does. It takes him a couple of frames, yours is almost instant. So you want to take advantage of that. So right now, I don't exactly know where Vile is, fortunately it's first round. So he could have hypothetically won if I had gotten really bad luck. So just to recap really quickly, 
Know where he is at all times. Eat his yumblies. You have a wall and you eat faster than he does. So we want to take advantage of all of that. The rubber banding is not so much important right now. You just want to take advantage of making sure you don't... Like, see, he's going to that one. Bam. I couldn't get to that one. Oop. And also, if you see Vile walking in a certain direction, it's always to a Yumbly or a Grumbly. So you want to take advantage of that for the path thing. Oops, see, so he's going to the right. There's something over there. Go grab these three. Oops. So right now I'm winning by two. He's going all the way down here. Just grab it so we know where he is. He's gonna go up there, obviously. Uh oh. Okay. I'm taking a chance by going right. Okay, I got this. Alright, that's two. Hopefully I don't accidentally mess this up. And for this last round, whenever the counter changes from 1 to 0 on the second digit, you're going to see it change from uh, Yumbly to Grumbly and vice versa. So that's kind of your visual indicator of when you should start prepping a switch. And Vile doesn't really prep for that, he just goes for the next one, and he never eats the wrong one. Hmm. This is troubling. Okay. Okay, there we go. That's much better. Okay. Taking a little chance, because I should be near he near him. Let me eat those. Oh, crap. Woof! Alright. So, ideally you want to be near him, but I was kind of panicking. So, if he talks to you again and says, hey, challenge me again, just say no. LRNB that shit. Alright, get out of here. Chomp, chomp, chomp. So, notice right now, well, it said I have eight jiggies. You'll either be at eight or nine, depending on when you grab this jiggy. Either now or later. Uh, grab that jiggy, and this is a really weird part as far as camera movement because it likes to go everywhere. So we're gonna grab these two notes, then grab the tokens. I like to try and... You can experiment with um, whether or not you grab the notes in between the Jinjos or grab the Jinjo first. But after you grab everything, just go over to the Buzz Bomb, let them see you, and then kill yourself in the nicest way possible. And then, like before, off and on. It... Done with file. From here, just do some chomping. So remember, chomping is faster. Once you get here, Mumbo's gonna say, I'm running out of magic. And then you run out of mag magic officially that time. So it's not a big deal. We don't really need alligator anymore. Don't get hit by the Gruntsling, obviously. And move forward. From here, we're gonna get this Jiggy in here. Obviously, it's caged off, but if you recall, I destroyed the Grunty statue's top part of the hat, and we can actually just jump up to the arm, and then just go right in. We don't have to go all the way up to the cop or to the pot, excuse me. So keep walking, keep walking. Shock spring up. And you can Talon Trot there or not. Um, no one really knows or cares whether or not you can go into Talon Trot. And then from here, attempt a quick Talon Trot. Ack. Try one more time. One more time. There we go. All right. It's actually not that difficult, but if you don't hit it, don't, don't do what I did. So Talon Trot here. Little imaginary platform that you can step on until it fades away, just to show that off. Talon shot if you can, um, in between, and just make sure you hold Z. 
going, going, going. Wait for the shock spring pad to come. And what we're gonna do is actually shock spring up to this coffin right here and just hold forward and press B. That's it. And we got a free jiggy. We don't even have to hit that witch switch in gobies. There's a token behind here. We're gonna grab it. And from here, we're gonna ignore this for now and we're gonna go straight to gobies. Or, I'm sorry, straight open gobies. We're gonna go straight to the goby puzzle. Excuse me. Quick talent shot right there. That's actually one of the easier ones to hit. Um, I guess while I'm going to the next level and opening this up, just a quick uh, spiel on talent shot movement. You'll notice that I'm jumping pretty much all the time. The reason you jump is because it's considered the most optimal movement. Like I said before, when I was doing huts, the second you jump and move, you're at full speed. But if I were to stop jumping, you'll notice there's a very split second where Kazooie kind of like pauses. It's not a complete pause, you don't lose all your speed, but you do lose some of it. So for that reason, we continue to jump to make sure that little drop of the speed does not happen. So this next level we're going to is Freeze the Peak. We're actually not going to be here for long. We're only going to grab a handful of Jiggies. The reason for this is there's a move in here we need um, for Gobies, and there's a move in Gobies we need for this level. So just because of the order of way, just because of the, uh, the way we do things, we do Freeze the Peak first instead. So from here, there is actually a. Uh, a text queue. We, I recommend skipping these notes, you don't need any of them. As soon as you're near Boggy, you actually activate text, so just go around and collect these feathers. That's kind of a good visual cue for that. And we're gonna go straight to the Christmas tree. Go up here. You can jump right here, it'll activate that. And it'll still consider you climbing. Jump off here. Uh, if you Talon Trot right there, you're in Talon Trot for this next section, and you can just start moving immediately. From here, you, le you learn Beak Bomb, and what we're going to do next is we're going to go grab the green present. There's a special strategy that I use here. I'm not going to use it, because I don't recommend anyone learning it. I, it's something that I do. It's slightly, slightly more efficient, and by slightly I mean like not even a second maybe. So what we're going to do is just enter flight, spam the Beak Bomb, and we're going to do a little mini pelican dive on the screen present. Got it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 feathers. You want to use 14 feathers, wait until you're below the nose, use one more, and then just keep holding up and land on the pipe jiggy. Probably the coolest jiggy in my opinion, but... And then we want to land on this sled. We get a free token for this, just for landing on the sled. Nothing special. Cancel the text. Notice how I didn't cancel the text. If I had canceled that immediately, the Jiggy would have spawned me right away. And when I, when I cancel that second text, Boggy starts running away. So that's why, as I've said before, you always want to cancel the text. So we're going to skip these notes again. Enter the igloo. Jump up. And you want to make sure you're on this table, because this is where the Jiggy spawns. So throw this present over here. Don't even bother text until you throw the third present. So Talon Trot there. And like I've said before, um, there are multiple setups for, for the flying sections. Um, that's primarily what I use. And as I've said, just experiment and um, do whatever feels comfortable to you. Um, from here, after we exit through Z Peak, like I said, pretty painless and quick, we're gonna go straight to Gobies. Um, there is a very, very interesting trick in Gobies Valley called the Gobi Clip, and is actually one of the most frustrating moves, or one of the most frustrating glitches in this game. One of the few glitches in 100%, so to speak. I'm gonna try it. If I can't get it, then just look for a video elsewhere. If I get it, that's great, otherwise, it's not a big deal, honestly. It saves some time, but it's more hassle than it's worth. Not really, it's actually always worth it. Jump back, grab the yellow Jinjo. 
Um, be careful not to accidentally warp back. It's very easy to not get it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab these notes. And we're gonna leave the ones on the right for later. Um, there's two different ways you can do this jump from up to the Red Feather platform. You can either jump from here straight there, or if you're over here, just hold up into the wall and you'll make that jump. Same for this one. So I'll show it one more time. If you just hold up, it'll give you a little bit more vertical distance. From there, go to the boots. So I'm only going to try this Gobi clip until I drop down to maybe 3 health. Um, if I get it, that's great. Otherwise, I'll show you the backup strategy for this. So literally all you do, and it seems kind of redundant if I don't get it, is we're just going to beak bomb, or I'm sorry, beak barge, right here. Okay, I'm not going to bother with it. It was worth a shot. I'll post a video of it. Um, if you have an interest in it, um, then look it up. Um, and as I've <clears throat> and it's also easier on, em on emulator. So if you do have emulator, I always recommend going for it. Instead, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, if you actually want to see what the rat looks like, look up the world record on this. So... What we're going to do is we're going to fly through the rings until we get the ring near the cactuses. I don't know when that's going to be. It's all pretty much RNG. Since uh, that spawned there, I'm actually going to detour for an extra mumbo token. If I missed it, that would have been silly. So maybe if I... Eh, I probably won't bother with Gobi Clip, actually. So that one... I know it seems like a possible idea but I would not recommend beak barging these unless you know you're not even going to hit the ring, or it's the last ring. Because you put yourself in a lot of really bad scenarios when um, you beak bomb for the rings. You could land on something, you could hit something, it might not trigger the ring for some reason, it does happen occasionally. So what we're going to do is... Actually, I'm going to leave that one later on purpose, and I'm just going to land on this cactus. It seems counterintuitive, but I'll explain why. So, we're just going to immediately shoot those, uh, shoot eggs into the nostrils, and roll off, because that will give us temporary invincibility. If you do fall from there normally, it actually does hurt you. And from here, let's see if I make that. So, what I, I'm not even going to bother looking into it, or uh, changing the camera angle. If I just hold right and shoot an egg, I'll get it. In fact, I should be in Teletron right now. So, you can also experiment, like, I should be able to hit this. But I didn't. For this last one, it's actually a little trick that you can use. You can actually spit eggs prematurely and prep that. Keep in mind that, for some reason, the sparkles on the magic carpet might accidentally despawn the eggs. So it's not always reliable. Uh... Just grab these notes. If you want to kill Grabba for health, go ahead. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do it because he's a jerk. Gold Feather kills him a one hit, whereas uh, Ratatat Rat takes two. So I'm going to grab these two notes. At, at, need that note. And get out of here. And on this paw, I'm only going to grab this corner note here. I'm going to leave those two for very much later. So again, jump jump. Now, remember how I got those rings, and I have this ring still to get, so that means I have to do it all over again. Which is actually completely wrong, because this is the last ring in the sequence. Notice he says, only joking, we can only give you this jiggy. So, even if you enter another zone, the ring counter still stays the same, but the ring position resets to the first one. So, like I said before, if you're ever gonna do the rings uh, and not Gobi clip, fly until you see the cactus ring and then just enter Gobi. So from here, I'm gonna do the slow strat. There's a faster way to do this, don't worry about it too much. So what I'm gonna do is fly, use two feathers immediately, wait until the camera kind of positions itself out, and then beak bomb. That should always hit. 
and then just fly for three flaps, stomp, slide down, and go in here. Something before I mention this part is Gobi's Valley, which I should have mentioned earlier actually, is very, very strict on your egg usage. What happens here pretty much determines how the rest of the run goes, and you'll be using a lot of eggs here. So 43 is considered a pretty strong number, but if I miss a lot of these eggs, then it can really end badly. And you'll notice that I use two eggs for shooting eggs into the nostrils, and I use three, four eggs, because I missed once, for um, feeding the little statues on the wall for raising the carpets. So for this part, avoid Rupee because he activates tax and slow. So from here, one, two, three. One, oh, I'll, I'll still face this way. One, two. That's it. It's not crazy. So just go on here and then high jump. High jump duo. You can experiment with that. And then roll off, flutter. Try not to hit the fire because that actually is a damage source. Grab these notes, grab the token. Grab more notes. And then let's get out of here. So it doesn't matter how much health we have now because we're going to refill up all of our health. And from here on, health is actually a huge factor because we specifically get hit at certain parts. So cancel all of this. So we're gonna get hit here three times. If I'm really fast, I'll only get here twice, or get hit here twice. It's actually pretty difficult. Yeah, I didn't get it. I would have jumped barely before I got hurt. So that was three, and then we're out. And this part is grab as jiggy. Um, normally you need speed shoes for this. The visual cue that I use is this little texture on the wall, that right there. And once you're there, jump along it, cancel the talent shot with B, and then bear punch, and then do a re-jump. And then roll onto it, jump at the peak of your jump, right at that wrap. I should have gotten that, but the first jump was weak, and I technically missed them. Right at that wrap, and there we go. I highly encourage you to experiment with the camera. Um, it can get really funky just because you have to see a lot of things at once and you have to kind of assume certain things as well. Pretty much, uh, you have to try and see everything. But like I said, experiment with, the, experiment with the camera. Try and have it behind you, ideally, if you can. So, we're gonna grab this middle note here. We're gonna uh, avoid that one for later. Grab that note, grab this note, go on the rail. And then we're gonna jump over here and we're gonna use three eggs, and if we can, Quick Talent Trot. So notice, I was able to go into Talent Trot before the cutscene activated, and it just assumes that I've always been in, or it cancels out the animation with um, the cutscene. So, oh yeah, what you saw there, I like to occasionally change the camera like this. It's considered the claw pose. I'll use it occasionally from time to time. Uh, since I'm taking my time, it's not gonna happen too often. I just figured I should explain that really quickly. So jump up here, stomp, jump, roll, do whatever. Roll, and go. We're going to do this puzzle. So the first thing we're going to do is just hold straight, and then go all the way to the note. The position for this is always the... Or these are always the same. So from here, the best way to remember those is basically a knight's position. Those two are always next to each other. This is considered a knight's position. Oh, I, I missed that token, actually. Uh, this is also considered a knight's position. And knight in chess, I mean. Not um, knight as in, I don't know, medieval times, I guess. Go over here. This one is diagonally. Go right next to it. This one is also diagonally. And then these two are the only two left. And actually, I did a kind of a smash with strat on accident. Um, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. There are more convenient patterns to use that'll put you closer to the Jiggy, but all that matters is that you grab the Jiggy once you hit the last switch. Smasher strats, just to clarify, are kind of unconventional strategies that I wouldn't recommend for first-timers, but that one is pretty easy. So what I did there is spawns me here, walk forward, jump, hold back, get up here, and we're just jump to that handrail. Don't try and don't try and maneuver this, because it's very slow. Go over here. Be careful not to fall in the sand. It's very 
very bad. And like I said, this route is very health, um, health efficient, I should say. From here, from here, from here, we're gonna go ignore the carpet, go straight to Gobi. And we're gonna just try and do that. If you hit at a really nice angle and timing, you can actually um, land on the Jiggy, but I've only done it once. And I've been playing this game for quite a while, so I wouldn't count on it. So I wanna grab this feather, because why not? Uh, from here, there's the honeycomb we spawned earlier. We're not gonna fly to it, we're gonna do some sort of damage manipulation. So what I'm gonna do, spawn slap up. Oh, that was not good. I'll try it one more time. As soon as he spawns, you wanna do that. So I'm actually really low on health. I'm not gonna worry about it until I see the mummies. Because you do actually want to be at 2 health uh, for the rest of the run. Not just because it's safer, but there's a part where we purposely get hurt. So, grab this. If you want to detour for the feathers and eggs, you can. But, um, for first-timers, or for people learning this game, it's going to be a little strict. Like, I just grabbed the feather there because I could grab the note there because I need it, obviously. That note. And as we're falling, I'm going to grab this token. It's actually kind of a slow token. I could hypothetically skip that. But I'm going to get it for the purpose of this tutorial. So try not to get hurt by these mum mummies. Ugh. All right, I'm actually going to spend a gold feather just to kill one of these guys for health. It'll depend on where everyone is. So, all right. That's fine. So, ideally, you could grab all these. I don't really need the eggs. I honestly don't even need the feathers, but you should grab them if you need them. So, move down. And shoot three eggs. There we go. If it helps you, I recommend holding R to aim. Um, just because it always keeps the camera in front of you. So, for example, if I was trying to shoot something up, like over there, then I'd have to like move it and try and get precise, whereas if I hold R, the camera will always stay behind me. And even if I move slightly, it's very slight. I've been playing this game a decent amount of time. So for example, like this one, I'm not going to use that trick, I'm just going to... And see, I still missed one. So it's... It's recommended, it's not... It's only recommended, it's not uh, vital. So jump over here. We're gonna grab only these two handrails on the left. We'll grab the other two on the other handrail on the way out of this labyrinth. Um, you could jump in here if you want. I usually don't until I'm straight because there is fire that does damage. Um, instead of traversing through the entire maze, we're just gonna jump up here jump up here to the brightest part of the wall, and then jump on top of the wall. So what this allows us to do is just kind of shortcut literally the entire maze by walking on top of it. And I guess something I could show off, that witch switch, we're completely skipping it. Don't even bother with it, there's no point. So cancel talent drop here, before you get to the sarcophagus, and just jump in. So jump in here, collect those gold feathers and the Jinjo. And the reason we want to be at 2 health is if you're really good at quick diving, oops, and not terrible at missing tokens, what you should be able to do is land here and get hurt by the sand, as, sh as so. And it's because the game still thinks you're in um, going back in, it's because the game thinks you're in that animation of going out of Talon Shot that it still thinks that, oh, there must be land here, therefore you should technically I got hurt. That's why the game hurts you. It's not vital, and you know, if you're a new runner, I'd actually recommend having more health. It's not a huge deal, also you definitely want to grab the Jiggy, don't forget it. So this last part, if you're a new runner, I actually recommend having more health, just detour for it if you have to. But I'm going to do this with one health. So, what I'm going to do is go to Gobi, get him, 
help out Trunker, which by the way, he is wearing a hat, not a leafy wig for anyone doing furnace fun later. Um, just something that I should mention, I guess. Grab these speed shoes, jump up here. Oh, that skips the, uh, the dance animation completely if you're wearing any kind of shoes. Make sure you don't get hit by that guy, especially because I don't have enough health. And stop jumping, uh oh. Stop jumping here. And then, so I'm surprised how, how, quick, how close I cut that. But you don't want to start, you don't want to jump when you're right about to uh, enter this alcove. Because there's a chance if you try and jump again, you might actually be in the air and you'll just fall in the sand and die. So, don't do that. And then from there, tell him trot, and exit. Um, that's, that's it for that level, so we're just gonna, we're gonna head over to Mad Monster Mansion right now. Actually, this part is gonna take some time, so I feel that I should explain certain things. Um, as I mentioned before, um, I would recommend running this game, I, I guess before I do anything, the part I'm going to do next is um, open up Mad Monster Mansion. And this part unfortunately does take quite a while, which is why I'm going to start explaining some things not necessarily related to the game um, itself. So don't enter Talent Rot there, it's pointless. Um, for running this game, you want to have version 1.0 ideally. Version 1.1 does not allow ticker skip, or the ticker towers. You can't do the termite skip in version 1.1, so you'd have to find five more Momo tokens. Unfortunately, I don't know the route of that offhand. You would have to find Ham Bacon's route because he used to run version 1.1 Japanese. Um, if you run PAL, it could be either version 1.0 or 1.1. The way you can tell the difference between the two versions is by looking on the back of the cartridge and looking for an imprinted number. If you see a letter next to the number, you have version 1.1. If you do not see a letter, that is version 1.0. No one runs the Xbox Live Arcade version because that is considered a bad version of the game. You cannot skip text in that game at all. So, literally, no one runs Xbox Live Arcade Banjo-Kazooie. Um, if you are just starting out running this game, or you're a newcomer, try shooting for a four hour, or sub four hour Oh my god. Alright, I, I missed a token, by the way. Um, normally you'd get that token, but anyway, I have an, a, an extra token. If you're just starting out, I recommend trying to get a sub 4 hour time. If you don't have a timer on hand, you, you can use the game time. That's a good enough um, visual cue. If you're starting to get the hang of things, I expect um, people should be getting 3 hours really quickly. Because a lot of that is just getting used to movement and camera. Um, you wouldn't start seeing times below three hours until you start really well executing a lot of tricks. My personal time is two hours and 29 minutes of real time, which is a very strong time in my opinion. Well, it's also fourth on leaderboards, but ack. Anyway, after all that, I was supposed to flutter there. Sometimes the flutter doesn't work. Um, you want to get rid of that spider web and then we're gonna go in here and we're gonna go all the way to Mad Monster Mansion the camera does a little crazy stuff here and there you just want to keep an eye on it make sure you don't fall down and immediately we're gonna go to the left I actually like to zoom in so that I can see where the gate is um, if you don't destroy this gate and you finish the level, you're going to lose a lot of time just to go back and destroy this gate. And here we go. So, Talentrot, jump. Just the full jump is good enough to grab those notes. It's pretty much going to be the same thing every time. You want to go to the left and grab these notes. There is a chance the ghost on the left will try and tail you. If you see he's in your way, like right now he's not, now he is. I'm just gonna get rid of him. 
Ideally, it's faster to just ignore him if you can, unless you're constantly getting hit. And for some reason, the other ghost is never really in your way, and even if he's near you, he seems to be higher than the other one, so you can just walk under him. So from here, try and aim for that pipe. And I like to hit the window on the other side of the wall, just because it shoots me back. I know people do it closer to the other side. Uh, grab these notes. There's another note over there that we're going to leave for much later. Don't get hit. Uh, make sure both windows are cracked and open. Talent shot, and I'm actually going to land and then press B, because that, like I said before, the attack still comes out. And if you attack right here, then you have to w deal with waiting and the landing. Just hold up left, kill that guy immediately. And grab the yellow Jinjo. And the Mumbo token and the notes. And then wait to land and then go right. For some reason, if you start holding any direction that's not convenient, you just fall. And then you have to go all the way back up, and it's kind of a nuisance. You can just walk under these guys, um, as you probably saw in Clanker's Cavern. You can't walk under all of them, but you can walk under most of them. Grab this last note, and there's a really there's a really silly glitch that I'll show off. When you grab this Jinjo, it's supposed to make the wee sound effect. If I'm really fast, he's not gonna make it. He's not gonna make that sound effect until I leave the mansion. Okay, so it should happen. As far as this token, deceivingly easy to get, just immediately run into the fire. It will not hurt you. Until it loads. So from here, just jump on the chairs. And this is the exception to the rule. As you've noticed before, I've been grabbing all of these with Ratatat Rap to avoid that kind of flutter. This is the exception to the rule. I'm just going to jump as far as I can, make sure I don't land on that uh, flight platform if I can, and just grab it in Talent Trot. So I'll cancel the text, flies away, and immediately goes into the animation. So as I mentioned, that is the exception to the rule. You don't need to cancel Talent Trot there. So grab all these notes. There's actually a slightly faster way to do this. I wouldn't worry about it for now, though. Uh, grabbing the notes on the chairs, just to clarify. There we go, there's the sound effect. Climb up here, and we're gonna enter the cellar. Cancel Talent Trot, flutter, and then stomp, because that actually can hurt you if you're not careful from falling. Uh, go into Talent Trot. If you go here, face down right, shoot an egg. That will open up the barrel with the Jicho, and that one opens up the Jiggy. There's actually a Mumbo token in here, but we're not gonna get it. And I'll explain why later. Oops. We're gonna grab these notes. And as I mentioned before, I'm gonna grab that. So we almost already have all the Jinchos. Uh, uh, jump over this way, excuse me. Destroy the grate. We're gonna grab those three notes later. If you wanna grab them now, go ahead. It's not a. It only saves a couple of seconds. Grab this Mumbo token in the corner. And we're gonna do a uh, Tumblr. Now, as I mentioned before, this is this has a countdown timer. Um, the fastest I've seen is someone finishing with a time of 50, but that requires very fast strats. You'll probably be getting closer to a 43. So jump up here, make sure you don't fall off because you can start moving immediately. I'm gonna use the slower strategy. Um, the faster one does exist on my channel. So hit those. Once you hit this, jump stomp. You'll go through this with Stomp Recoil Invincibility. Move to the O. Stomp Recoil again. You can just go right through him. You don't need to worry about that if you are recoiling from the stomp. I'm actually a little slow right now. I'm not going to worry about it, though. If you hit any of those switch squares, it actually does one damage of health to you. And you don't want to try getting hit too much, because it does affect everything later. So right there, that was a 44. Not going away until I cancel that text. So you might need to experiment with the uh, weird hand positions. What I like to do is hold uh, away with my thumb, cancel the text, and then roll back. Don't enter Talent Trot, just, um, just roll. Oh, don't forget that note either. 
Alright, um, don't get hit by those guys. They're jerks. So, talent, or excuse me, shock spring up here. Talent shot quickly, because you can actually slide down. This game is tricky like that. Grab the token on the four notes and jump over the hedges. And what we're going to do is, after we get hit, we're going to wait until we're at the edge of the hedge, talent shot, and jump to the other hedge. So, talent shot over here, walk a little bit. Helm trot, jump, right attack wrap again, and then jump down. This is the well area. It's just a little shortcut. There are faster ways to do that, but just learn that way for now. Um, something I should mention here, when you're going to the other two notes, make sure you jump in the center. Don't try and position yourself over here, because you might accidentally try and jump while you're in the air from the speed. So just jump in the center of the shock spring pad. You'll always make that jump. Jump to that, jump over here. Shock spring and go into the well. Spam Z. Then make sure you swim down to the jiggy. This is probably one of the scariest parts in this level. What we're gonna do is make sure you're holding R, by the way. Grab this, swim out a little bit, and just from everything here on out is just full turns. Don't even let go of B, don't let go of R. Just this definitely takes practice, and we grab that last note with our feet. Get up here. Go out, go to this. Uh, there is an interesting way to grab this Jinjo. Um, it spawns a Jiggy, and if we grab it normally, we can actually, or that would just cause us to do the dance, but if we grab the Jiggy and use the momentum to fall into the water, we skip that dance entirely. I'll try to do it, it may not happen. Nope. It's kind of a tricky trick. A tricky trick. It's very tricky to do. So, I guess from there, it's not a big deal. Just keep going. Uh, grab these four notes and go to the... Uh, go to the speech use. Hit the switch first. Those three notes that I left alone before, we're going to grab now. Before we enter the church. Don't miss the shoes. That would be silly. Like I said before, grab these. It's pretty tight. If you don't think you can do it, then grab the notes first and you'll have plenty of time to do it. Alright, so from here, uh, this is actually where your gold feather count matters significantly. If you only have two or three, I'd be very careful. Or even if you have one, I should say. So high jump here, kill this guy. And you can actually talent trot jump from here to there. Uh, for this one, you can do the same thing, or you can just high jump here and just spam the flutter button, or spam flutters. Uh, go over to the pedals. If you need health for some reason, there's some behind or to the side of the church. I'm not going to worry about that, though. And from here, we're going to jump in the proximity of Mott's hand, and we're gonna play his weird song. This pattern is the same every time, and I'll say the letters out loud of the keys if anyone wants to write them down. So, he starts his text, activate, first one is G, then D, and I'm gonna use my weird annotation for this, C sharp, A, F, A, F. Cancel text run over here, B flat, F sharp, E flat, A, D, F, A, F, B, E flat. So normally I'd enter talent right there, but I do want to explain something about this that will make it a little bit easier to remember, especially if you have a music theory background. Um, the first letter, or the first note I hit was G. Uh, the last, or the, let me rephrase that. The lowest note in the organ I hit was this G. The highest note I hit in this organ was the F sharp. That is all within the same scale. These five buttons you can ignore, and the buttons down there past the G you can ignore. Just remember that they're all within the same scale. In addition, 
the B button, or the B letter, the B key, excuse me, is only hit once. Just something to remember, and if you look at the pattern, you can actually see uh, some repeating patterns within it. So, just grab these notes, go over here, grab this, don't wait until you hit the, uh, the wall of the organ, and use four feathers there, and then stomp. If you wait until you're at the wall of the organ, you're not going to grab the Jiggy. Instead, you'll just kind of miss it, and it kind of sucks. So Talon Trot, and then just uh, don't fall. Watch out for that skeleton. We're going to grab this using the Jump Stomp move, and then we're going to roll down, and then we're going to flutter. If you need to Stomp Recoil, that's fine. Shit. Sometimes that ghost can be kind of a jerk, so make sure you keep an eye on him. And then exit the mansion. And from here, there has been a slight route change as far as how to do this. What we're going to do, instead of grabbing all the notes on the ceiling first, we're going to jump up here. And then just grab this one note and then immediately go inside this. Whatever it's called. The hole in the clock. We're gonna grab three notes. Ideally, you'd actually want to jump, but it's not a big deal. Oop, 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 oop. Don't do that either. Uh, you're gonna be over here. You also don't want to go all the way to the top. Make sure you jump and then stomp. That'll grab the jiggy. And then while you're sliding down, hold away so that you don't fall down. Talent tried over here and then jump to that note and then just grab the rest of these notes. Don't miss it. And then from there, you actually just go right down here, kill this guy, or if you can, um, run away from him, and poop into the egg. Notice how I had four gold feathers. I'm going to be using all of my gold feathers on these gravestones. If you don't have gold feathers, just rat -a tat wrap them. In fact, just to show See, I did it once. I'll have a gold feather extra in the end. The aiming is a little bit finicky. Just um, do what you can. But, see, like that? And somehow I got the egg back. This is also why I said... Um, actually, I want to show something here. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, shoot, I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, for this one... Uh, for the gravestone that I killed, the way you face actually manipulates the path of the Jiggy that's about to spawn. Ideally, you want to be facing from this pot, you want to be facing that way, up and right when you kill him. That will give you the most advantageous position of this, uh, of this path, or this Jiggy spawning. So, I didn't face that way, it didn't go the way I wanted it to, it's not a big deal. There's only a few Jiggies that do that kind of manipulative behavior based on how you kill an enemy. So from this, we want to be at 32 tokens ideally. I missed one and I got an extra one, so that makes sense. We're a pumpkin, we're doing our thing, we're adorable, and we're going to be jumping a lot. Jumping a lot. So grab this Jiggy. And then go under this little hole in the wall that I actually didn't realize until I started playing this game. Grab that token. Uh, just, just to mention that if you jump up during uh, slopes, you actually do move a little faster. I'm going to grab this token. Get out of there. If you need an egg, now is a good time to grab them. Usually, uh, less experienced runners will either have way too many eggs, or like, or like two. Go into, uh, the toilet. And way back when... Grab this Jiggy. Way back when, I mentioned the Mumbo token in the 1881 barrel. If you decided to spontaneously grab it, you will not see this token. That token is in literally two spots, but if you grab it in either one, it despawns in both locations. So, if you don't see that token, that's completely normal. That means you grabbed a token early. So, from here, don't fall, because then you have to go all the way back. 
98 notes, and the last two are the very la first two notes we left behind. Right here. Alright, um, from here, I'm going to go into the gate we broke earlier. Make sure you don't get hit by, get hit by that guy, because uh, he's kind of a jerk. And also remember, we did not death warp. So if you're at one health for some reason, and he hits you, then it's going to cost a couple of seconds, and you'll be down a life. Not a big deal. Go in here. One, two, three jumps, full jump. Go in the casket. We're going to grab this Momo token now, and then we're going to de-transform into Banjo. Transform, I guess. It's not de-transforming. Um, then we're going to go on the casket. Stomp. If this guy's in your way, use a gold feather if you need to. And then stomp, and then just wait for this cutscene to play out. Don't go into Talent Trot. Just um, go right to this pad and transform back. And just grab the gold feather on the way out. If you do need eggs, you don't need a lot of eggs for the rest of the run, fortunately. Just, um... If you have zero eggs, make sure you have three by the time you enter Freeze's E Peak. So, nothing crazy here. The next level we're going to go to is Freeze's E Peak. Pumpkin's a little slow. Nothing to really talk about right now. The only thing I will say is make sure you don't fall here, as I've mentioned before, on the way in. Because that can kind of suck. And it happens sometimes. It can happen, I should say. Uh, jump. Cancel text. Jump. Notice my weird position, because I don't need the Z button right now, so this is how I held the controller. And then Talon Trot. And the next level we're going to is Freeze Z Peak. Or at least I would, but I'm going to cut it short here because I'm going to put this into a two part series and I'll do the rest of this tutorial another time. You'll probably see it in my channel or in some other convenient location. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you see a link to part two, I encourage you to click that and see the rest. There's not much left in the run. We're a little more than halfway done, but the rest of the levels are very long. Or at least Click Clock Wood is much longer than the other levels. So thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you guys next time.